average user who what they primarily want to do is surf the web, email, and like you say, casual gaming. But I, they're not to the point yet where yeah. I can actually get yeah. work done on them. We need a lot of yeah. software development to go on for those platforms for us to get. Yeah, there. yes, I'm not. I'm not suggesting the desktop is dying or anything. Loads of people actually play default, so they caught them in and say, "Well, either it's desktop is dying or it's not dying." Well, it's you know, there can be something in between those things. And uh, and the fact is, the tablet is just growing in terms of sales, and it is a place where you can say, "Look, Linux is gaining somewhere." I'm seeing the KDE today. They've just released a uh, an on-screen keyboard. It's going to be more suitable for uh, use on a tablet, and they still work on the interface, especially the Plasma desktop, to be more suitable for not just netbooks but also a plasma screen where you use your fingers. And the important thing, and the reason I think that Linux is going to be pretty unstoppable here, is because if you've seen all the tablets that now cost, cost basically dropped to the cost of uh, one hundred ninety-nine dollars, and even less than that. Have you seen any of these? The several of them now. A lot of them are getting into the one gigahertz range. I would like to see them start getting into the one gig of memory range because you really need one to two gig of memory to really do desktop like stuff, especially in the modern web. Would you would you do that? I mean would the average customer who buys a tablet do that now you see, this this is where I, I disagree because i read an article recently i actually wrote a, a post on this where microsoft was claiming and it's one of the few posts where i've actually written a rebuttal to a micro, microsoft text and they were trying to claim that the desktop was not dying now i don't think the desktop is dying what i think the desktop is becoming is far more niche the average user uh, which roy briefly mentioned is only interested in very simple type tasks for example their facebook their a few emails not how, right however that, that that's why i'm saying you need the more memory you don't need the more processor a little mm. dual or tri-core gigahertz chip is more than what the average user needs mm. but what people forget is that the modern web is very dependent on two things flash and javascript and without a good amount of memory these little lightweight mm. devices cannot process that smoothly like they would on the desktop, which means you need an app for everything, and no matter how many apps there are in the marketplace, you're going to go to website X that didn't think to write an app for your platform, and the page is going to lag like the internet did in the late 90s, and people aren't going to put up with it, they'll just go, this device sucks, and throw it in the trash can. It's. Uh, I mean, I think the desktop form factor is... On its way out for the for the for the general average user. I'm trying to desperately think of a need that your average user would of having the traditional keyboard, CPU, and monitor sat at the desk. And I mean, we see it now. My wife is is probably a very good example. She uses Facebook quite a lot, and she prefers to use it on her phone than on the netbook. Although the netbook is well, small well, and, and Android actually has an advantage in that because it has the talk to text stuff and so forth. Mm. I mean, you really you could just tap the box and go. Hello world, I am doing blah blah, and it's pretty good at getting it right. It's not a hundred percent, but it's pretty darn good. Mm. So it, it was quite interesting that Microsoft tried to, dis, uh, to dismiss rumors at the desktop. I don't think there is going to be much money in the future uh, on the desktop for the for the vast majority of people pr uh, producing software specifically for the desktop form factor, because the average user, like it or not, are the unsung masses who are buying these devices. They're the ones that made the iPhone as popular as it is. They were the ones that made the iPod as popular as it is. And the people that know about technology and have an interest are making up a very large proportion of computer users whatsoever. Uh, you. So I, I think what we're going to start to see, I think we're going to see the tablet, which is a happy medium of a, of a mobile phone with a bit bigger screen, uh, in the home far more, and certainly a device which will be favoured by the vast, vast majority of, of users, and this is which is this is what is so encouraging for me. Where, as Roy said earlier, Linux is present on so many of them. Um, so hopefully, that's going to be a trend that will continue. I think Microsoft will come up with an offering, but I think very much like Windows Phone Seven, it'll be too little, too late. No, no, that, that that is what Microsoft's offering is going to be. Uh, towards the end of next year, they're planning to do Windows, Windows 8, Eight, and it's, yeah. it's, it's more but, of Windows Phone Seven. That's, well. That's, uh, you never know. They may come up with with an Android esque type uh, type solution because at the moment I remember BBC Click very recently covered 
um, Windows on, on a tablet and it just would not, it didn't appear to function without a keyboard. Um, I, I can't remember the comments because I think me and Roy talked about it at the time. Uh, the it, BBC Click even grilled uh, Steve Balmer a little bit about it because he was insistent to uh, show the side of it with a with a keyboard plugged into it, a sort of hybrid tablet slash netbook. Um, but I can't remember the conversation we had on that. But I don't think Microsoft has got a chance now in it in the same way that Windows Phone 7 has a chance with um, with Android and uh, Apple devices. Because I think it's too. Well, they're going to cheat basically, and, and yes. uh, I think we'll cover it later. Yeah. Uh, one one uh, thing I um, can we uh, go into a song now? Just yep. before, yeah. Uh, so the the next one is a one that I chose. It's called Deeper Conversations, and it's by uh, somebody called Yuna. You believe in outer space And now I'm learning you It's your skin is tanned as mine Does your hair flow sideways Did someone take a portion of your heart Don't mind, can you tell me all your hopes and fears and everything that you believe in? Would you make a difference in the world? I'd love for you to take me to a deeper conversation. Continuing, continuing on, I think Roy, we've uh, knocked our little list out of sync a little bit, and we covered yes, yeah, very, ever so slightly. But uh, yeah, but I, I just move things around a bit. <laughs> yeah. What we'll do, Roy, back over to you, I think, and you can continue on. So we were going to mention something about the anniversary of Linux because I don't think we even mentioned this before, did we? No, we we, we started to, but then we moved on to the tablets. Yeah, <laughs> is it actually a very important thing to? thing to cover. Apart from the festivities and everything, I, I don't really think there is much to say about it. We covered the uh, Linux 3.0 thing before, that's an actual more of a bit of news than the uh, 
ceremonies and things. Yeah, I still don't look up at it. I, I still don't look at it as a 3.0, but I guess technically it's if they want to so, call it 3.0, it's like... 2.6 point the age of, uh, of Linus Torvalds, I think. Yeah. So, so that, that's the, the joke about why you didn't want to go up to 6th. Uh,